Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick update on my experience with the new Google Nexus 7. Now, of course, this is the second generation Nexus 7, and so far I have to tell you, it really has impressed me. I expected a very solid tablet, one that was well made, although I have to say on a quality control level, at least in terms of what I've seen out of my 32 gig Wi-Fi unit, everything has been stellar. I will mention uh, the small things that I found through the course of this update, but so far everything has been great. Uh, as far as the screen goes, gorgeous. This 1920 by 1200 resolution display outclasses everything in its footprint. That's why I do have the uh, Note 8 next to it. Clearly not the same resolution. You're looking at a lower res tablet with a larger screen, an 8 inch screen, but still I think these two tablets really do draw the closest comparison right now in the sub 10 inch form factor. And I say that because in my opinion both of them are uh, far superior to what is offered in the iPad mini. I mean both of them really outclass that device head to toe unless you're in love with iOS. In that case, well, I'm not sure why you would even consider either of these devices, but when it comes to actual performance at price point, both of these right now represent exceptional values. The difference is really the Nexus 7 does have the latest and greatest when it comes to hardware. As I mentioned in my unboxing, the Nexus 7 is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 uh, quad-core 1.5 gigahertz processor and that is a relatively powerful chip the same one in the Xperia Tablet Z which I reviewed, uh, reviewed very very solid performer and when it comes to what's around the corner it won't be as powerful as the chips we're going to see over the next quarter of this year and that's just simply a matter of the actual roadmaps that manufacturers have but when it comes to what's currently out this thing is right at the top of the class so in terms of replicating the success of the original Nexus 7 with bringing top tier hardware to a tablet at a budget price this tablet has accomplished it just on the internal level and I say that because the Note 8 next to it yes I've got the cover over it right now because today I'm not going to be doing a direct comparison between these two tablets I'll save that for another video this video is really just about the Nexus 7 and where its place is in the market and who it's right for right now based on what I've seen uh, in the limited time that I've spent with it the chip that you have in here is a very solid uh, A9 based quad core processor of course an Exynos chip and it's fantastic it performs really well same chip found in my Galaxy Note 2 I love the experience touch whiz is really a matter of whether or not you enjoy it and uh, for those of you who aren't familiar what I'm talking about touch whiz is the overlay that the Galaxy Note brand carries so many will argue that actually lags and slows down the experience here you've got vanilla jelly bean 4.3 almost out of the box. I did have to go through some updating out of the box, but it is up to 4.3 now. And there is no question that with the Nexus experience, you are, or at least should be getting, the best experience possible for the platform. And I think this is that device without question. So it wears the name uh, accurately because so far in my use, this thing has not missed a beat. Now, with that said, they both have, as I mentioned, quad-core processors. This, however, the S4 Pro, is not of that A9 architecture that I mentioned before. This is part of the newer A15 architecture. So you are getting another generation. So for those of you out there who are thinking, I'll go out and pick up the older Nexus 7 because, quite frankly, I could save $50, $100, and in real-world performance, there won't be a remarkable difference I would argue or say I strongly disagree with that opinion because overall this thing is night and day compared to the experience you would have with the Nexus 7 and even though the Nexus 7 is a great tablet was a great tablet the fact of the matter is that's why this is replacing it because it really does bring us up to the current generation of hardware when I first unboxed this I felt that maybe this tablet wasn't as uh, groundbreaking as the original Nexus 7 simply because it didn't have that uh, you know Tegra 4 or the S600 or S800 but um, the matter of fact here is that the S4 Pro really is just an underclocked S600 to my knowledge and that does really get uh, or it is reflected in all of the benchmarking that I've done so far so I'm really impressed with this device 
I mean, think of it as a miniature Xperia Tablet Z for all intents and purposes, just based on the hardware you're getting, and you're getting it at half the price, uh, even less if you were lucky enough to get in on the um, uh, some of the deals that uh, went on at Best Buy and Staples over the course of the launch of this product. Uh, so really, it does represent a whole new uh, expectation for the price point, much like the original Nexus 7. And it's tough to beat, and that's why I have it next to the Note 8, because the Note 8 is definitely a more high-end tablet in terms of who Samsung is trying to market it to. Granted, the pen is its big calling. There's no question about it. That's what the Note brand is all about. However, I have to say that despite the fact that it has dated hardware to a degree compared to the brand new Nexus 7, which it should, it's also missing NFC, something that uh, is a great addition, uh, especially for photographers, which I'll be touching on also because I think the Nexus 7, this generation, is fantastic for photographers because of this new screen and NFC, of course, which was there, but still, improvements are all around on this tablet. But back to the Note 8, even though you've got that older hardware, Things like Wi-Fi, for example, seem to be stronger in the Note 8 in terms of that dual band reception than what I'm seeing out of the Nexus 7. But something like that is to be expected considering, again, price difference. This originally launched at $400. This is launching at $230 and $270. So a stark difference, but now that this has been on the market for a while, you are seeing a price uh, drop. And as a result, I've seen this tablet go as low as 350 at Staples, even a little bit less. So it's a matter of time before these are on the same level. So it's really going to come down to, I think, more of a preference for the Samsung experience and the polish that comes with it. Uh, if you're really prone to that experience, you use it with your smartphone, you're going to be partial to this. Again, not a, a full comparison of these. I'm going to probably save that for later. But just for those of you out there who are looking at these two tablets right now, trying to figure out which one is the better of the two, it really just comes down to whether or not you are a fan of the Samsung Note experience. If you are, then I think you're going to want the Note despite the lower screen res, despite the fact that it doesn't have that faster processor, that newer generation A15 architecture. All of those things really won't matter at the end of the day because this is the right comparison for where you can argue that real-world day-to-day experience will not make a difference. Of course, SD card, uh, micro SD card slot for storage expansion here, for many people, is the beginning and end of why this tablet will win out every day. But with that said, let me get that tablet out of there. Also do want to point out, they both have very, very similar battery life. And that's interesting because this is a substantially smaller tablet. Uh, I think the dimensions of the Note 8 do lend to a slightly uh, lighter over feel the, uh, overall feel, though, just because they actually uh, are spread over a larger surface area. But let me show you guys some performance, because I know that's what you've been waiting for uh, beyond this long diatribe about uh, basically my impression so far with this gadget. Uh, the Nexus 7 is just, as I've mentioned, amazing so far. Uh, everything has blown me away. Uh, build quality was what I was most worried about, and quite frankly, the build quality has been solid. I've got a little bit of a creak in the back side, on, on the right back side of the tablet, very similar to what you'd find with just about any plastic tablet on the market. Uh, even with the Xperia Tablet Z, I saw a little bit of this. You know, there, there are just pr it's prone to have a couple of spots where the battery is that the case has a little bit of give. And if that's my largest critique, which qu quite frankly right now it is, then you know this tablet is just stellar. I mean, that is the reality of the Nexus 7 second generation tablet right now. So uh, let me show you guys some video playback. Jump into Transformers and just show you, since after all, this is exactly what Google is looking for. They want you to be using the Play Store, watching their movies, buying their content, and playing it back on their devices. Uh, I am connected, well, I'll fill in the blanks. Let me crank the volume up. Okay, I think that should serve to demonstrate 
playback in terms of also the fact that that was streaming, that was not onboard storage, which would be even faster. You saw a bit of buffering there. Also, it demonstrated the audio performance. You guys saw the range of me bringing uh, the audio up. We have speakers on both sides of the device, which is another enhancement from the previous generation, a critical one, because now pretty much no matter how you hold this tablet, you're going to get solid audio performance. At its highest level, which is what I brought it up to there, I'm not sure that you guys are going to hear exactly, of course, the same thing that I was here, but in my experience so far with this tablet, when you do take it up all the way, it does get slightly distorted, but that's not uncommon with just about every tablet, even smartphone on the market these days. So again, I'm really struggling to critique this and find fault with it. The display is gorgeous. I mentioned earlier for photographers, this tablet is a complete no-brainer. You can pick this up at a very affordable price point. You've got the latest and greatest of everything in something that is easily pocketable, realistically. And that's part in part because of the narrowing of this bezel. Uh, you have something that's clearly more prone than last generation to being a solid e-reader, in my opinion. And that's not just because of the higher res screen, but also uh, the as I just mentioned, the narrowing of the bezel. I think it also does lend to a more comfortable feel. Uh, the fact that it's slightly thinner, I think is certainly an advantage. And some, I think some people will actually find that the thinner feel, however, doesn't lend itself to being as rugged and as much of a quality feel, especially since it has lost that rubberized texture. Again, still soft finish on the back side of this tablet, but it, it doesn't have that grip that the last gen had. But all of these things I'm mentioning are really just minor cues in the large scope of things when it comes to what you're looking to get out of a tablet. If you're looking for a phenomenal seven inch screen, this IPS uh, display delivers that. In fact, that's why I keep mentioning for a third time now that for photographers, this is an amazing tablet. Now, granted, you don't have a way to you know, throw an SD card into this in any form, micro or other. But the uh, USB cable, or excuse me, micro USB port at the bottom does support host. So you can connect devices as long as you pick up the right software. Natively, uh, Nexus devices all, overall across all platforms, or I should say form factors and varieties do not support uh, natively host, but the feature is there with uh, the purchase of an app in the Play Store. So you will be able to connect a wired camera, jump drive, be able to show clients your portfolio, and in such a pocketable form factor, great battery life too, which is just another bonus. You're gonna easily get through a day of use with this. Charge time also relatively fast. I'm not gonna give you guys firm numbers yet on either of those uh, statistics simply because I've gotta get through more charge cycles with it. And battery life has been good enough that that's why I haven't gotten through as many. Uh, but again, between that screen quality, the speed, you know, you're not going to be showing clients pictures and waiting on things to resolve the way you would with last generation's tablet. And that's with the extra resolution. So that says a lot about what you're getting in terms of not just value, but top tier quality out of this product. Uh, I've shown you a little bit of video. Let's go on the web. Of course, Chrome is stock on this tablet as expected. I'll pick it up for this try to avoid as much glare as possible. And I do have the screen at full brightness right now. And I'm nowhere near my router as usual with all of my reviews. And you guys can see this loaded up really quickly. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned before about Wi-Fi being a little bit stronger in the Note 8, uh, it's negligible. And that's another thing where realistically, most people I do not think would notice that. Let me go ahead and actually pull up an article. Um, Oh, I'm trying to find something not, uh, something that isn't too depressing. And in fact, let me just zoom in all the way so you guys can see how well that text really gets rendered with this new screen. And that's one thing where, as far as e-reading goes, the new form factor as well as uh, resolution and overall quality of this IPS display is really phenomenal. Uh, so now this is the first tablet I can really say, uh, if you're looking for an e-reader as well as top-of-the-line tablet, you can get it in one device. A lot of people would have argued that the original Nexus 7 accomplished that, but this extra resolution and overall just the, the color accuracy, what I'm seeing, it's just best in breed right now. By the way, no backlight bleed, no dead pixels. I'm mildly worried about the design, uh, which is similar, the bezel, uh, the way they've sealed it, that dust may get underneath. Have read about some people 
uh, getting units that do have dust uh, or a dead pixel, but those are regular, you know, run of the mill uh, quality control issues you can find with any manufacturer. So that's certainly not unique to Asus or uh, the Google partnership. You could get that with a Samsung made Nexus 10. It's those are just the rules of the game, folks. Uh, but overall, screen quality is really good. Let me go ahead and just oh, it's all such horrible stuff. <laughs> not that this was a favorite of mine, but you guys will see that how quickly this loads. And that's what's really impressive at this price point and just really impressive. It's pretty much a lag-free experience overall. Uh, no zoom here because this did take me to a mobile version. That can all, of course, be fixed in settings uh, in terms of how quickly it can orientate itself. I didn't do enough of a turn there. I'll do enough this time. You guys can see it's very fast. And while that's the most ridiculous way to test performance, we all know that we all still do it. So. Um, yeah, Im important to see that this thing really does everything very quickly and for a budget tablet, it's just amazing. Build quality, again, solid all around, a little bit of a flex on the back there, like I said, which is just indicative of the glue of the battery separating with the plastic backing, something like that. But all plastic tablets, including the Note 8 that I have right over here, uh, suffer from the same sort of, you know, quality control issues and vary from unit to unit. So overall, I really like everything. I haven't tested Bluetooth thoroughly yet, so I can't really comment on performance there. I know a lot of you are worried about uh, how the Bluetooth will perform. That's been an issue uh, in Jelly Bean, but I'm not gonna get into that too much right now. Uh, but uh, let me also I'll show you another website, why not? You guys have been with me long enough. May as well see some more. My typical go-tos, little ESPN, which will probably put us on mobile. So we'll go down and get the uh, full site if it allows me to. And performance is just really impressive. And that's why, frankly, at first, I didn't think I was going to be that impressed with what Google had put together here, but now I am. And I, I keep reemphasizing the photography thing because this is just a dream come true for people that want to instantly review photos, whether you're working with something like uh, the NEX 5R, which of course has Wi-Fi, or the brand new uh, RX100 Mark II, which, you know, I'm in the process of just putting through the paces, which has NFC and Wi-Fi, then it's just an amazing pairing. And that's, and we're going to see more of that with, uh, you know, more cameras as they come down the road. So this is just a beautiful tablet for just about every consumer. And I know I'm giving this a glowing review, but that's because in all honesty, there is very little to dislike about this tablet. I think my biggest gripe, which is the same across all Nexus products, is no storage expansion. But that's not part of Google's play here. It's not their, what they're trying, the message they're delivering, um, the experience they're looking to give us is a cloud-based one. So I understand that. Uh, would love to see eventually them make that switch, but that's about the only thing they do share in common with Apple. They do not want to allow us to expand storage, unfortunately. Uh, of course, no flash here, but there are workarounds. Uh, this is a completely open device, so expect all sorts of different things to be able to be done. I will be giving you guys uh, a gaming demo. This tablet does fare well in that arena as well, but that's, again, part of it having the latest and greatest as opposed to last year's tech. So really impressed with the Nexus 7. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that you guys really need to know. Um, I've already mentioned how great it is for e-reading but I'll just give you guys a little demonstration. Why not? Oh, this is a subscription. I'm not trying to do subscriptions right now. So essentially, completely already formatted for this tablet, but it just looks great. And you know, in terms of the actual bezel, as I mentioned before, this is a more narrow tablet now certainly lends itself to being an e-reading machine. And that's where this is really a first in my opinion. All of the Kindle tablets attempt to do what this tablet has mastered. And the fact that this is a completely open device, always going to get the latest and greatest software from Google just makes it um, even better. I mean, that's usually the biggest complaint that you can have um, within the OS 
for Android is that, you know, because every manufacturer is going to be putting you on the clock, making you wait to get the latest software. In fact, that's their way of trying to get you into their next product line. Uh, that's where the Nexus brand really tries to bridge the digital divide. And I think that's Google's vision, unless I'm really off the mark. I mean, I could be. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. But it's not just about getting a great tablet at a great, uh, great price. I don't know what their margins are here. Uh, but I think it's really about bridging that digital divide. And Google knows that a powerful tablet that's mobile like this, that gets almost around 10 hours of battery life, charges relatively quickly, especially if you get a higher ampage charger, is just, uh, you know, something that I think just about everyone can find practical use for. So uh, overall, as I've repeated multiple times, really pleased with this. Uh, of course, you do have that camera now on the back, which was vacant on the first generation. It's a nice addition, but as many of you know, since I review a lot of cameras, I'm not really fond of any cameras on tablets. I think Sony generally does the best job there simply because they make all the sensors for all of these cameras. So that would be a very good reason that Sony would have some of the best imaging on a tablet. But with that said, so far the cameras are solid for a $230 and $270 tablet. Better than anything you'll find at the price point. Uh, would I say it's better than what's found on the Note 8? No. Very close though. Very, very close. Again, overall, really like this tablet. Battery life is good. NFC, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Need a little more investigating there. Everything just works as it should. So uh, Google doing their job as it should be, doing everything right here. Uh, and really nothing bad to say. If you guys have any questions or comments, don't forget that wireless charging, of course, which I demoed. But if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.